Good morning to everyone here and to all of our listeners at home. There's plenty of energy in this room. I guess that shows what a nice picnic can do for a church. So we're grateful for that. Please turn to the back of your bulletin. You see some very important printed announcements. Uh, I also So we're looking at Monday, September 19th at Gus's Restaurant for the next Lady Sharing Luncheon. People have been asking about Janet Burt's new address. And this Tuesday evening, gathering for desserts at 6, and we'll be looking at the first chapter and a half of the very small book of Second Peter. Thank you all for participating in the New Church Pictorial Directory as well. Any other announcements? before our prayer. Joy to be here among your people, 
sensing your spirit and presence, singing favorite songs, reading your word, sharing our concerns, and finally, hearing words of hope and encouragement to live our days. May all that we say and do be pleasing to you and be inspired through you. In your name we pray, amen. amen. And at this time, Carol and Brett Swales will lead us in some song.
When we all get to heaven, it's hymn number 698. <clears throat> Please sing it along with us. We've been given a gift of salvation. Praise God. 698. Sing no wondrous love.
Mexico. And I got to thinking about what Billy Hawkins said the other day about dunking fries in a milkshake. Need I repeat? Ew. Hey, I thought it sounded pretty good. So I ordered some fries. But there was this value meal that you can get with large fries, a large soda, and a hamburger for $7. Wow, that sounds like a good deal. That's what I thought. So there I was with my milkshake, soda, fries, and hamburger, but then I realized I spent all my money. Well, if it was your money and you wanted all that gross food, then that's fine, isn't it? But it wasn't my money. What? Just before I left, my dad gave me $7 and told me not to spend it. Oh, Harry, you're in trouble. Yeah, I am. When I got home and told him, his face turned bright red like a tomato. Actually, it was pretty funny. For a minute, he just yelled at me, told me I was irresponsible. Then he calmed down and apologized for shouting. He told me I was grounded for a week. So no more mayo and ketchup milkshakes, huh? Yeah, that's what I'll miss the most. But later he came and talked to me. He told me that money was for ice cream after church today. Oh no, that is terrible. Yeah, he also said that he still loves me and he'll love me no matter what I do, always and forever. That reminds me of the story of Moses. He killed a man, but God still loved him. Just like your dad still loves you, our Heavenly Father still loves us when we mess up. We might miss out on some great things, just like you missed out on the ice cream. But in the end, God is still with us. We come now to our time of sharing our joys and concerns. On Tuesday, Clarence Martin had a procedure, but it was a small one. It was not open heart surgery. They gave him about maybe four to six weeks maximum. Clarence immediately went home the next day, uh, and his family is very concerned. He's the oldest man in the church, and, and perhaps the oldest of, uh, the oldest person attending. So you may gladly visit him at home often check the church directory and take his number and call him before you're going. Um, so remember Clarence Martin, remember Dolores who had shoulder surgery and came out of the surgery with a fracture in her arm that has been very painful for five weeks uh, and very, very discouraging this week. So please uplift her and pray for healing and just grace there. Any other prayer requests today? Yes, BJ. And this is not a prayer request, it, it's a joy. And it was such a joy yesterday at the picnic at Jefferson Bollinger's cabin. We had a lot of fun, there was plenty of food. And thank you, Cindy and Jeff. Yes, thank you, Cindy and Jeff. A <laughs> and again, the kids were in the water the whole time. Uh, and a couple of adult kids as well. Any other things to share today? Yes. And again, her name again? Dorothy is back at work after major heart surgery, right? Two bathroom replacements, open heart surgery, and a lot of waiting for and we were really worried she wouldn't. Praise God. Others, anything else? Let us turn to praise song number 175.
And Jesus, there is something about your name, about your presence, about your spirit, about your amazing grace that is working in each of our lives. We adore and praise you. We confess how much we forget to keep our eyes and hearts and emotions on you and hidden in your care. Thank you for bringing each of our lives to this very day and moment. We all confess that we struggle. We have sinned, some public and some private, and we lift them to you, each of us, from our lives for your healing grace and new beginnings. We also, this morning, lift up Clarence Martin, for your healing help and Dolores for your help we thank you that Dorothy is back to work we pray for Bill Schuler who is struggling with fatigue and Cindy's son Jackson who is continuing to recover we thank you for the joy of being a church the joy of a wonderful picnic and all that you are doing in our lives we take this moment now, and each of us will silently lift one private concern to you for your touch and for your help. Dearest God, thank you for hearing us. Thank you for your love and your long-term and even eternal plan for each of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And Betty is going to lead us in hymn number 552. <laughs>
the story of a man named Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, verses 46 to 52. There was a large crowd that had formed, and this was quite a scene that took place in a matter of a few minutes. Mark chapter 10, beginning with verse 46. Then they came to Jericho. As Jesus and his disciples, together with a large crowd, were leaving the city, a blind man, Bartimaeus, which means son of Timaeus, was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to shout, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Many rebuked him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. <clears throat> Jesus stopped and said, call him. So they said to the blind man, cheer up on your feet. He's calling you. Throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked him. The blind man said, Rabbi, I want to see. Go, said Jesus. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus along the road. Our story begins with a Jewish man named Timaeus, and we know almost nothing about him. Timaeus means honorable. He was trained in the occupation of his father, and his dream was to get married, raise a family, and to live up to the meaning of the family name, honorable. So he gets married, sets up his home, and they're overjoyed when his wife gets pregnant. And after the birth of their son, they soon noticed that this son was different. He did not follow their faces when they talked to him. He did not respond to their smiles. Slowly and painfully they realized this precious baby was blind. And you know, to this very day, you and I don't know this baby's name. Of course, this grown man's name. Yes, he's called Bartimaeus. The first letters of B-A-R, Bar, means son of. Bartimaeus means, well, he was the son of Timaeus. In the same way, that Barnabas was the son of Natus. Why bother even giving him a name? He would never earn a living. He would never raise a family. This was the curse of blindness and disability in the first century. Blindness prohibited the descendants of Aaron from ever performing ministry at the temple site. And his parents wondered, was their son's blindness their fault? Were they being punished for, for something they're not aware of? When we meet this Bartimaeus, he's sitting by the road of life in a literal sense, and life was passing him by. <coughs> Have you ever felt that your life is stuck and life, the road of life, is just passing you by? Much of all of our lives consists of waiting. But waiting is part of the process of becoming what God wants us to become. Most of this day, he's waiting for someone to drop a point in that small cup 
That way, on his own, he could eat that day. Bartimaeus hears a commotion coming. Little did he know that his whole world would be turned upside down in just a few minutes from now. Now, Jesus meets in Bartimaeus the most perfect disciple he has ever been looking for. This man is blind, dirt poor, and the only one who calls out Jesus, son of David, by name. And if you look at the text carefully, <clears throat> Bartimaeus asks for the most important thing we can pray for, and that is mercy. God have mercy on me. He jumps up and leaves everything he has, which is his coat, to come to Jesus. You know, in the Bible, your coat was so important for survival that the law forbids taking someone's coat overnight. The crowd starts yelling at Bartimaeus, Be quiet! Be quiet! He has no business calling out to this great Jesus. Jesus is a big deal. What would Jesus want with a nobody? But Bartimaeus yells, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stops the whole crowd and says, now call him to me. Someone led Bartimaeus over to Jesus. And Jesus asked that famous question, and what do you want me to do for you? May we be careful what we ask for and how we approach God. A few years ago, a woman went to her doctor and met the new and younger doctor who was now a partner in the office. She demanded an immediate cure for her terrible problem. And a minute later, she burst out the office door, ran down the hall screaming. The older doctor met her and grabbed her and asked, what's wrong? Her name was Mrs. Terry. Mrs. Terry, who was 63, old, 63 years old, explained, he just told me that I'm pregnant. They both marched right back to the new doctor and said, why did you say she was pregnant? He looked up and said to her, do you still have incurable hiccups? <laughs> Here is the most overlooked part of this story. 
Did you know that another famous group of people had just asked Jesus the same request, an even more giant one? I'm going to read just the preceding verses, Mark 10, 35 to 40. Then James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came to him. Teacher, they said, we want you to do for us whatever we ask. And by the way, so do you and I when we go to God. They replied, Jesus, let one of us sit at your right and the other at your left in glory. Jesus hung his head and said, oh, you don't know what you are asking. Can you drink the cup? I drink. Or be baptized with the baptism I'll be baptized with. We can the answer. Jesus said to them, you will drink the cup and will be baptized with the baptism I am baptized with. But to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom it has been Prepare. These are the kind of questions Jesus is used to getting asked all the time up to this very moment. It was all about the glory of James and John, one on the right, one on the left. If Jesus asked you right now, okay, stop, stop the service, what do you want Jesus to do for you? What would you say? It's a hard question. When Jesus, when these two groups, the famous James and John, and a, no, and a nobody came to Jesus, they asked for exactly opposite. James and John said, give us glory. And what did Bartimaeus say? Have mercy on me. Give me mercy. Opposite approaches to God. Verse 52 says, Then Bartimaeus followed Jesus along the road. He became a part of the larger discipleship group. That, and then they, he joined them on that 15-mile road from Jericho up to Jerusalem, which turns out to be a 3,350-foot 3, uphill climb. If you and I are serious about following Jesus, we have a lot of climbing ahead of us. This great walk with Jesus ended up at the cross where most every one of his followers at first had deserted him. So Jesus says to you and to me the same this morning, what do we want? Do we want glory, or do we want mercy? Do we want to know Jesus? People say, I want to know Jesus. And of course, what goes along with that, do we want to know him through the fellowship of his sufferings? Do we want to do our own religious thing, or do we want to learn to die to sin daily? as long as we live, that we too might live in the newness of life that only Jesus can give. I hope we want to forgive, give and let go all in the name of Jesus. Bartimaeus asked that his eyes might be opened. And as we sing our closing song, open our eyes. May we need the same in receiving God's mercy. Number 403. <laughs>
who just sang, Lord, open my eyes and my ears. Hebrews 10.25 says, Be careful to entertain strangers, for some have entertained angels unaware. As we look at our new sensitivity to what God is doing, may you and I listen for the experience of God, His presence, and for the angels' ministries in our lives in the coming week. Let's read this in unison. And we'll begin. Angels have been found in unexpected places, speaking to Sarah's handmaiden, wrestling with Jacob, explaining the burning bush to Moses, feeding Elijah in the desert. They formed the first choir and sang with glory when our Lord was born. Listen and be alert. You wouldn't want to miss one, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. 